Hello everybody, welcome to a special edition of The Uncuckables. Uh, this is a morning ele Australian Election Day edition of The Uncuckables. We have uh, Steel Archer from The Unshackled. Hi everybody. We have James Fox Higgins from The Rational Rise. And we have That's a very special... And we have a very special guest. We have Senator Fraser Anning. Welcome, Fraser Anning. Yeah, g'day. Thanks, uh, Dave. Great to be on your show again. Uh, thank you for making the time. We really appreciate it. Um, whereabouts are you now, and what are your plans for this morning? Whereabouts are you going? Uh, well, we've been to Warwick, um, and now we're back in Toowoomba. Uh, just been to the polling booth with our, um, with our candidate there. Uh, Terry Adrilius, and uh, then in about another 15 minutes, we'll be heading to Ipswich uh, for our candidate to say good day to him there at the polling booth and talk to some of the people. So, uh, yeah, we've been pretty busy. We haven't stopped travelling for the last month, so uh, it'll be good when it's all over. Yeah, beautiful. Any eggs so far, I wonder? <laughs> Sorry? Any eggs on the uh, trail today so far? Uh, no eggs, luckily. Um, Excellent. I think they're saving them for Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's only fair, right? <laughs> I think so. I've taken one for the boys, and uh, Morrison can take one, and maybe even shorten. Does Does this prove that perhaps you have a harder harder head than uh, Scott Morrison? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I think they had a hard boil one for him because it didn't seem to want to break. I've, I've suggested. Egg. I've suggested never send a woman to do a man's job. Actually. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. One. That's hate speech, brother. That's hate speech. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get for that. So, um, uh, what's the feeling, uh, just in terms of uh, the kind of feedback you've been getting from uh, voters, constituents? Um, how do you see yourself going today? Uh, do you, how do you rate your chances? Uh, well, it, it's always uh, it was always going to be a really long shot because you know we've been registered for forty-two days and. We only had 10 days to try and put a team together, and um, and in that time we did uh, we, we got a Senate team in every state and the territories, hmm. uh, and we got lower house seats in uh, covered in most of the states, but only you know five or six here and there. But in Queensland we have 30 and uh, five Senate candidates, so um, <coughs> we're giving it the best go we can for the time that we had. So um, how do I think I go? I, I don't know. It's uh, we're getting quite a lot of support from uh, the construction industry and also from the um, the mining industry, uh, you know, which are normally traditionally uh, Labor voters. But um, I think that they're a little bit disappointed in what Mr. Shorten's told me he's going to do, which is, you know, double the cost of electricity and bring in more um, illegal <coughs> or refugees and. Uh, and then attack our uh, our elderly, you know. So there, there's quite a lot of things there that they're not very happy with, and um, I think there's quite a few of them who are going to bleed from the Labor Party. The energy that's a good group campaign. to capture. It Sorry, is. On, well, Sam. we're um, we're for the uh, you know getting people back to work again, you know, and uh, you know the, the the Labor Party used to be a great party, and I think they've lost their way a lot now, but. Uh, you know, with our infrastructure projects that we want to get going, the dams and watering the inland and uh, drought-proofing the country uh, and other infrastructure projects, you know, more mines, more, uh, you know, coal-fired power stations to bring the cost of power down. We should have the cheapest power in the world, not the most expensive. And um, here we are shutting down uh, power stations and, and uh, he's promising to close coal mines. Well, there's, there's 30,000 men there that are going to be out of work, men and women. So I think they see us as a, a better alternative, some of them. So the energy, the energy around your campaign isn't just online, because I just read an article from the ABC which said that Fraser Renning has the largest energy online of, of almost up, everyone apart from Jackie Lambie. But like I, I work, um, I'm just a normal, like I'm just a worker. And, um, and uh, I hear that I, I, go, I go on the street and I say to people, you know, who are you voting for and all this sort of stuff. Even in Victoria, some people say, and this is Victoria, this is, you know, they say, you know, oh, I like what Fraser's is talking about because power, power prices are way too high. We have no cons car industry, all our industry has been shipped off. You know, we don't have any major projects. You know, I, I actually like what Anning's talking about, but I wouldn't, like, they don't say it. Like, they, they talk about it behind the shuttered doors, but then they go out and they say, oh, I'm voting Liberal or I'm voting Labor. They, it's, a, it's a taboo topic. But you, the, there is an energy there. It's a silent majority. It's a silent sort of sort, sort of a 
a silent wish. We'll call it the Anning Avalanche. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, yes, dear, look, you're right. Um, we've lost all our industry. Uh, we can get it back. And, and look, Donald Trump has uh, said that he'll... Uh, oh, sorry, you've seen what he's done there. He's uh, protected their industry, and we have to do that again. They call it a level playing field. It's anything but level. It's it's uh, basically shipped, they've shipped all their, their, uh, our, interest, our, man, our uh, manufacturing offshore. Um, just, by the way, when we bought our... Our T-shirts and our polo shirts and our caps <coughs> and our pins, we wanted them all built here in Australia, made in Australia, which was fair. The only thing we couldn't get made in Australia is this, the cap. Um, unfortunately, they don't make them here anymore. We, we tried 30 different uh, people and, I mean, somebody may, but we couldn't find any. So uh, that's the only thing that we have to uh, bring in and it's a pity that we can't even uh, make a baseball cap in the country. So uh, we we have to get them back and the way to do it is, is put tariffs on that uh, that protect our industry, protect our wages for our workers uh, and keep everyone working and get more people back to work. And it's also, it's a national security issue as well because when you ship off all your skills, all your talent, all the machines, you can't produce indigenous weapons. We can't produce fighter aircraft. We can't produce tanks. We can't even produce the bloody pates that go on tanks. You can't produce tires. We, we, can't, we can't actually be a self-sustaining, uh, like, military nation, even though we're on an island and we should be the best in the world at that, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a national security issue as well. Yeah, you're right. Um, also, the other thing that's worrying us still is that they're shipping, we're now shipping off our beef and our milk and a lot of our other, other uh, produce now. Uh, what people don't understand, I, I guess a lot of people, they, they're not seeing the problem, but you know, when they're paying $200 a kilo for beef and $40 a litre for milk, because it's all been shipped to China and uh, they may send us some of the rubbish back, but um, uh, I, I was a mustering pilot when I was a kid and uh, you know, younger and um, I, I was mustering all the Gulf and the Peninsula in uh, aircraft. And uh, we, one of the beautiful big places up there is a place called Esmeralda. Now Esmeralda uh, has 35,000 uh, beautiful cattle and now that four or five days ago that was bought by the Chinese. You know exactly where all that beef's going to go. It's not going to go here. It's going to go to the shelves in the supermarkets in in China. So um, that's that's going to become a problem if eventually you know more and more is shipped off as it's being done now. Then obviously the price has got to go up because we'll have less and less here. So um, they're things that uh, you know our, in, our, our uh, industry's gone and now uh, you know our food's going to go as well. And uh, it's the Australian people who are going to cop it there. Can I just one of the issues that you're talking about, um, Senator Ranning, that, that no one else with a decent platform seems to be talking about as well is the banking cartels. And, you know, your one of your policies is to create a, um, a state controlled bank. And I think uh, a lot of libertarians are terrified of that idea. Um, but we've, there are examples in the past where it's worked very well. What can you tell us about that plan? Well, it's, it worked extremely well. Um, we built the Snowy Scheme with a, a bank owned by the Australian people. We uh, fought two world wars and were quite successful there. And that was all funded by our, com our original Commonwealth Bank. Uh, by putting it into private hands, uh, we, if it had been an open market, fine, but it's not. It's a, it's a quadrupoly. So basically, you've given four people the right to uh, you know, control our banking system. And, uh, you know, they've, they've uh, done a terrible job of it. They've uh, robbed the Australian people. Uh, that's why we got the Royal Commission up, and uh, if I do get back in, if I'm lucky enough to get back in, I'll be pushing for a real Royal Commission. That was a that was a whitewash. They, uh, out of 10,323 uh, people who submitted their uh, problems, only uh, less than 30 were heard. So uh, that was a joke. Uh, we really do have to have a real Royal Commission. The last Royal Commission into institutionalised abuse of children, uh, they just there were over 6,000. Uh, sorry, yeah, 6,000 people. And that's why we really have to reopen that, uh, bring the banks to account, and plus the receivers, the liquidators, the administrators and the agents, because they're, they're just basically, they're criminals. On the subject of banks, uh, when Maddie and I saw, met you last week, we spoke to Rita, who's one of your Victorian uh, set, one of your Victorian candidates. Um, we were really impressed by the quality of uh, the candidates that you've have put their hand up for you. And we've also be, I've also been really impressed by the fact that we seem to be getting people who've never been involved in politics in their lives and have just got really interested and really concerned about Australia the last few years and have been just putting their hands up and saying, "Hey, we've got to do something." Have you found that replicated across Australia? 
Absolutely, yeah. <coughs> um, that was David, I'm sure. But, yes. Um, David, uh, it's exactly what's happening. The people who are putting their hands up are real people. They've, they've worked all their life. They're not pro uh, career politicians. Um, there's there's cattlemen, there's um, uh, engineers. Uh, we have one, uh, two engineers standing for us in Victoria, and one of them is in the top 0.5% in the world in his field. Um, uh, and they, they're brilliant people, and they have children, and they're worried about Australia. They don't need the job. 85% uh, of the people I sit in that room with have never had a real job in their life in the Senate, and I think uh, about the same in the lower house. Uh, really, they're, they're career politicians. They do some uh, fairy degree, you know, basket weaving or, or arts or something like that. Who knows what their bloody degree is? And then they, they get groomed for the, uh, for the job, and they sit in there for the next 30 years and uh, take their money and then take a good pension. So uh, we, we need real people who have actually worked in... Uh, in the workforce, and we've been very, very lucky to get those people to put their hand up. Well, a lot of these politicians, they just get trained in the art of rhetoric, and when someone like you comes along and starts speaking uncomfortable facts, they just melt down. They just don't know how to handle a, a dialectical conversation, and they fall apart. And we need we need them out. You know, we need we need real people who are interested in speaking the truth, even if it hurts a little bit. Now we've got to tear the bandaid off. And if you're bloody George Christensen, you don't even stay in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's actually one of the better ones, you know. But, yeah, uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. Yeah, they, uh, we do need people that, uh, you know, want their job for, you know, for what, what it's supposed to be for, not just for a job. Um, so, you know, I'm, I've been very fortunate. Uh, we have great guys like Peter Manuel down in South Australia and, and uh, David over there in Western Australia, uh, David Archibald. They're in the, uh, number one on the Senate ticket, and they're getting a lot of uh, support. You know, I mean, we're we're not uh, we're realists. You know, I mean, the likelihood of getting people in is very very you know, is a bit slim, but uh, it's a start. And uh, if we can get a couple in there on the cross bench, then Shorten and Morrison will have to uh, whoever is excuse me going to be is going to have to come and uh, talk to me, and we can then start uh, pushing for what we need. Nice. Anning Avalanche, I'm calling it Anning Avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I, I think um, I've got to say I think the phrase I think your party has a pulse on the heart of the Australian people. Like um, when you look at uh, the candidates from the major parties who have been um, disendorsed for saying things on social media, um, particularly about Islam. Um, like you look at the XYZ page or you look at your uh, social media pages, this is what we're talking about all the time. These are the actual issues that we're raising. So you have people for the major parties who are trying to raise these issues and they're getting kicked out of the major parties. Um, like yeah. this is actually what actually matters to real Australians. Yeah, you're right. And that, that's all our freedom of speech, you know. And, uh, you know, since when in Australia can't you voice your opinions? You know, we're, we're not uh, we're not outrageous and people say, oh, I know you're you know, radical right wing. I said, well, I'm just a normal conservative. I mean, in, in Menzies' day, I was probably, you know, a little bit soft compared with some, you know. So uh, that was how Australia was built. And uh, everyone's been brainwashed with the political correctness for so bloody long that they're scared to say what they think. And luckily now, I think you're right, there, there's a fairly, uh, a bit of a movement, uh, a groundswell, if you like, and people are starting to come out of the woodwork. And I, I hope enough of them come out of the woodwork so we can get some people in there and start turning this uh, place around, get away from this socialist agenda. I'll tell, I'll tell you where yeah. you really connected with me, Fraser Edding, because you, you would know where I'm from. I'm born up in Atherton, up in the Tablelands, up in the Tablelands. So you know it's yeah. God's country up there. So when you started yeah. talking about the, the white farmers who are building uh, 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 farms in Dimbula and stuff, that really resonated with me because I, I know that whole area. I know Mariba really well and Atherton and Tolga and that whole area up there. So, so yeah. that's really good because you don't hear politicians who know local areas. And I know you know a lot more of the national constituencies like in their parts but that really hit me i was like yes he knows he knows where i'm from he knows the the how important these areas are and how how uh uh how 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 much life we can bring into this country with the some of these areas yeah you're right still um i yeah you know, i had 500 calves in the shed up there uh, a long time back when i was very young we were trying to restock a cattle place out near richmond and the only way we could do it was uh, by buying the calves, uh, the young dairy calves that they used to knock on the head. You know, in those days, they, they once the cow had the calf, they didn't need the calf; they just needed the milk. So um, 
Uh, we, we used to buy the calves and we had them in the shed and then we'd rear them there on milk until they were about two months old and then we'd ship them out to the uh, cattle place. But um, yeah, I know that area very well up there and uh, uh, it's a it's a beautiful spot, as you said. And Plus, I had the Babinda Hotel for a lot of years and my brother's still in the Babinda Hotel. Oh, no. Is that where you learnt the slap? <laughs> I'm sure rough. we learned a lot more. <laughs> I had a lot rougher pubs than that one. Um, yeah. In our life, and uh, you know, there are some rough pubs, and I, uh, because I borrowed a lot of money to buy them, you couldn't afford security, so we had to do it, uh, you know, myself. My wife's yeah, actually than I am. <clears throat> so we're getting we're getting messages that we have to wrap it up from Boston. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, uh, we'll call it a day. I've heard that ninety-seven uh, percent of climate scientists reckon you're a shoe-in. So good luck for tonight, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, good luck. Yeah. You're very God welcome. Bless. You're gonna win. Kick ass. It's gonna. It's gonna be yeah. easy. You've won. It's easy. We'll see you in the Senate. Okay. I hope. All right. Thank you. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, cool. I think they're hanging up. See you guys. Cheerio, everybody. It's getting serious now. See ya. Okay. Are we going to roll on? Or? Oh, we can roll on for a few more minutes if you guys like. Um, we've got a few people in the chat. Um, oh, good. Yeah. It's... All right, so everyone, that was Fraser Annie. Yeah. But that was there something, he goes. What a gun. <laughs> oh, they, yeah. they, they still got the camera going. Oh, here we go. Hey, hey. Now I'm giant. <laughs> <laughs> How do we like that in the chat? What do we think? In the, what are they saying in the chat? Um, yeah, I think they were pretty impressed. Up. Yeah. Um, it's been good being able to develop like a little bit of a relationship with adding in his camp over the last couple of months. Like um, he's used to, you know, talking to us and that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, it, it's, um, I hope people appreciate like people like, you know, you know, we're blowing smoke, smoke up his nose a little bit. He's on our side. But, like, we're actually trying to ask him, like, serious policy questions rather than trying to ask gotcha questions. So, I th Oh, we, knew, we yeah. knew it was going to be a rush today, you know. Like, it's, yeah. it's the, you know, he's on the trail. But uh, there, there are some good comments coming through. Um, uh, Just saying says, uh, if Anning doesn't get in, it will be a black pill. And I think, I think uh, you know, if that's how it goes, that's fine. We just have to deal with that because um, it will actually you know, accelerate the, uh, the the way things are getting worse in this country if we don't have voices like Anning's in the Senate. Mm. Um, and, you know, acceleration is another path to um, solutions. You know, it, it, it will wake up more people to the problems. And, uh, and all it means is that the left um, and the cowards and the fence sitters will be kicking the can down the road. And the next candidate who's representing the far right um, <laughs> will be a much harder bastard than Fraser Anning, you know. Mm. And yeah. uh, and probably have uh, much more uh, reprehensible policies, and and we'll need them at that point. Mm. So um, you know, it's either Anning now and people like him now um, holding the balance of power, or it's um it's just going to get worse, and that's okay too. Yeah. But, but yeah, well, like, like where, where is this country going though? Like we can't say anything anymore. We have no free speech. Mm -hmm. There is no conservative politicians. I mean, the amount of the amount of liberal politicians and, and and labor that just they say anything. Like what was it? What was it the other day? They said something like, "You can't say you're going to hell anymore out of the Bible." Mm -hmm. Fired just straight away. Yeah. Just fired. Oh, so, is, Israel Folau is going to go down in history as one of those turning points, you know, because um, this is this is the point now where. Um, the sporting world has been encroached upon by social justice narratives and political correctness to the extreme. The religious persecution of Christians has begun at the at the high institutional level in Australia. Israel won't be the last to be fired for his his orthodox Christian views. Um, and so, you know, down this, down that rabbit hole a, we go. This was a liberal politician. What's that, sorry? This was another one. This was a liberal politician who said this. Oh, right. And oh, he, sorry. And, yeah, and was, he was um, bang. Yeah. He was just wiped off the thing. Yeah. He said, oh, well, you can't say that anymore. Yeah. So so we have no conservatives. Yes. There's literally not a conservative. Like, mm. and he's right. There's the far left. There's the, being the Greens and the Socialist Alliance and all that crap. You've got the left. You've got Labour. Then you've got the center left. You've got Liberal. Yep. And then you've got nothing. Yes. It's just an empty wasteland of crap. Yeah. It, it's... 
It's not like even, oh, hey, vote for the Liberal Party because at least then we'll have some conservatives or at least even we'll have protection for freedom of speech. Mm. Like, the Liberal Party are talking about jailing people for five years for being trolls on the internet, um, which is very conveniently yeah. vague. Yeah, like, they're, well, they're the what, least where this, worst. Where this leads is that at the moment, we're just calling for freedom of speech, which is a return to that neutral position of everyone is allowed to voice their opinion equally, right? Mm. But when what we're going to continue to see is that the left don't give a damn about freedom of speech. They don't give a damn about our freedom. They're, they're tyrants. And, uh, and that we will have to become tyrants and actually in, infringe on their freedom of speech. We'll have to drop that universal value and just go, mm. you know what? Since you won't agree to freedom of speech and you won't compromise with us on that, then let's all agree no freedom of speech and your speech is banned and we will be the ones throwing you out of the country throwing you in jail you know so it'll just turn around and become very very uh hostile and inverted against them hmm. and again if that's what has to happen that's what has to happen but right now you know they think they think fraser hanning's a bad guy you know <laughs> like they know nothing john snow <laughs> yeah. he's, a, uh, he's he is a softy compared to um what's coming down the road yeah all i can say is chop 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 that's right that's right yeah, no, you're right. And and the, the thing is, is like, um, Sophie, Sophie York, who's the Ozcons, she's an Ozcons candidate in Sydney. And um, she, she was uh, in Sydney at the Opera House, right out the front of the Opera House. And she was actually making a video on free speech. You know, you're making a video on free speech. Uh, obviously, that's this is going to make it more ironic, but it could have been a video of anything. This was a proper campaign. She had a proper camera crew there and everything. Well, not proper, but pretty good you can see the video online mm. she's there she's doing the thing she's talking about it and what happens a security guard comes up to her and says have you got a permit to speak here literally he says have you got a permit to speak here and she said it's a meme uh, no uh, i don't have a permit to speak here he said oh, i need a permit i need your permit i need you to go and call wow. uh head head blah 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 so then she does it she, she she's she cucks like she's very nice and everything but she goes oh okay and she toddles inside she stands on the phone she wastes like an hour on the phone with these people these people say we have no idea what you're talking about why would you need a permit hmm. and all this sort of well, stuff something along the lines of hey it's a free country yeah yeah it's like Sharia law all over again. Remember the Kemba? You couldn't go in there, and now it's like you can't even speak on the front steps of fucking... Of the Sydney Opera House. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, the thing is, if we were in a country that rep, uh, respected our right to bear arms, you'd just tap the uh, pistol on your hip mm. and say, there's my permit. <laughs> <laughs> like America. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, those, that's right. And, and that's the thing is, those freedom of speech and the right to bear arms are so uh, <clears throat> necessarily linked. And, uh, you know, they've disarmed us in this country. And, uh, and of course, freedom of speech is going to be the next thing to go because we've got no means uh, to defend our freedom of speech. That's the strongest weapon, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, yeah, people in the comments section are actually um, correcting, like, what, some of what actually happened. Apparently, like, the security guard came up and said, We want to see your papers! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, welcome to the Soviet Socialist Republic of Australia, people. Yeah. Um, this is probably the last election where, um, where political solutions are remotely possible i'd say mm, yeah. uh so i hope i hope people vote wisely today because it's it's going to make a big difference to uh, our future and our children yeah frankly i i don't think the center can hold um we're seeing in victoria like we, we saw what the abc are um loving to boast about calling the calling it the dan slide um basically we've just had like full spectrum dominance by the left in victoria and just complete brainwashing add that to complete or well, add that to the demographic displacement that's going on um, I'm actually seriously concerned about previously safe liberal seats in Melbourne. Um, so yeah, uh, and so you, you've 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 basically got the middle, the centre going further and further to the left, um, mm. and then you've got the reaction of people who are like, "Hey, what is actually going on?" And as things get more and more out of out of hand, like people are going, uh, people start actually questioning democracy itself. Mm. Uh, yeah. Conserving uh, yeah. what? If Which is fair enough. It, like the, left, shit. <laughs> the left is like this big this big churning machine that gets yeah. faster and faster, but progressivism always speeds up. Yes. So those guys are speeding up. They're getting more and more crazy. Mm. And the conservatives are just grasping at sort of saying, we're trying to conserve. And the only thing they have left to conserve is the, the right to make money. That's it. If you think about it, which, which they're is, like, which leave is us alone and we'll make now. money. Or I'm a conservative. Like, uh, I, I have, yeah. and that's why all these liberal Democrats and these liberals and these libertarians that were coming along and they're all like, 
Hold on, we don't care about freedom of speech. We don't care about anything. Just let's leave our capitalism alone. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and they're part of the problem. I actually, part of the problem. I actually make the argument that you can't actually have a free market without conservative values. Because once you let go of those conservative values, you replace um, those like actual values with just shifting values of being nice. Mm. And so you're always having to, um, like if, if you always have to like level the playing field, you always have to look at who is a minority, who is um, like on the, on the fringe and that sort of stuff. And uh, always basically give them free stuff. Mm. Like you, you replace like just clear headed thinking with with socialism like mm. you either have um a free market and strong conservative values you let one of them go and like if it's either one's going to go down the drain um strong conservative values as well like people sort of talk about you know um you know like what happens it, the, strong strong conservative values helped to provide a social safety net in a free market as well because mm. it means that By families default. yeah By because default. families look after um each other mm. um churches look after the poor mm. all that sort of stuff By so default. yeah so that doesn't mean that you just have a dystopia where like you have like just some people just slipping through the cracks conservative values means that the poor get looked after the sick get look, looked after yeah the personal get responsibility after. yes not 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 looking for the state to be your parent and and manage every affair of your personal life that's so right the so and then you and then you're free to make money and then you're just free to make money the way yeah. real conservative societies are supposed to work is the individual himself is supposed to be strong and then he's supposed to lead a household and then the household is strong and looks after each other and then they help their neighbor and then that neighbor and them help a street and then the street helps a town and then the town helps other towns in the region mm. and then the region helps other regions which fall under it's a fractal map. man <laughs> it's supposed to it's supposed it's to work from dude. the individual <laughs> up right yeah. that's how yeah. it's supposed yeah. to yeah, be and you're right. supposed to have the church and you're supposed to have charities and you're supposed to have a bunch of values and a bunch of systems in place uh, that mm. that work from the individual to the family to the families helping each other to the street to yeah, the grass, street help. grassroots solutions instead of top down solutions to a whole, and, and, to a whole super state and unfortunately the unless and that, unless a, it's a kind that of libertarian is... it's sort of a libertarian position in a way um but what we're seeing is that as the left are increasing their totalitarian power the necessary reaction is is going to be right-wing totalitarian power you know and and they're the more they don't compromise and meet us in the reasonable center, mm. the more we have to harden and, um, what's the word uh, that they use? We have to uh, radicalize, you know, mm. we have to get, uh, just as they have. I mean, the radical left is overrepresented in our government at every level. Mm. And the, the radical right is only just waking up from its slumber. They have no idea the monster they're creating um, by, by spinning the bullshit that they do about people like Anning. Uh, so, right, you know, it's, it's, right. it's, an, it's an exciting time to be alive. Hey, i got to check out, guys. I've got to go vote. I've got to go vote one for the uh, Conservative Nationals. So, yeah, well, um, we'll... Yeah, have a great election day. I'll see you tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, I say let's call it and uh, we'll save it for this evening. Yeah. And there'll be plenty to talk Fantastic. about tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, All right. Beauty. See you guys. Yeah. Good Thanks, stuff. Jeff. See you still. Brilliant. See you, Dave. See you, Tim. Cheers. <laughs>